The Night Beat starts right now. It has been exactly one week since a soon-to-be father was gunned down at a large party. Yeah, 23-year-old Stefan Henderson shot as gunfire rang out at the event that took place on a ranch. A Crime Stoppers reward has now been offered as San Antonio police are still searching for the suspect. The night team's Jaffney Gray with the family's forgiving message to the shooter. I would never want no one to have to go through this, bury their child. Never. Since June 13th, Hattie Henderson Dulberry has lived in pain. San Antonio police say her son, 23-year-old Stefan Henderson, was shot and killed during a large ranch party that happened at a property on South Loop 410 Access Road between Somerset and Highway 16. Dulberry says police told her over 600 people were in attendance. There's no way 600 people and nobody's seen it. When police arrived, several cars were trying to leave while Henderson's friend stayed by his side. Since the shooting, that friend has stayed in touch with Dolberry. He sat there and, and held my son while my son bled to death in his arms. And I'm grateful that he was there for him because nobody else was. For 23 years, it was just Dolberry and Henderson, her only child. Mama! Mama! She says he would light up the room with his smile and goofiness that she'll miss the most. He loved to always come hang on my shoulders and kiss on me, and I'd be like, oh, your wet, wet, sloppy kisses. <laughs> so, yeah, and I won't get to share those kisses or those moments anymore, and I don't think it's fair to me at all. Henderson had two children with one on the way. His mother had this to say to her son's killer. I forgive you for pulling that trigger. But I also feel I deserve to have an explanation from you to why you pull this trigger. Now the family is planning a balloon release right here at the location where Henderson was killed. That'll be this Friday at 7.30 p.m. Crime Stoppers and San Antonio police still searching for the suspect still at large and they're asking you for help with any information that can lead to an arrest. If you have anything, you're urged to call Crime Stoppers. That number is 210-224-STOP. Jaffney Gray, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jaffney. A man is facing a capital murder charge after admitting to police he shot a woman in front of her two children on the west side. Sources tell KSAT the woman killed was pregnant. 35-year-old Dylan Meckel is now in custody. The shooting happened at a Motel 6 off Louis Pasteur Drive, not far from Wurzbach and Babcock Road. Right now, there are still very few details about what led up to the shooting. When officials got to the scene, they performed life-saving measures on, a, on the woman but could not save her. She was pronounced dead there at the scene. San Antonio police say the children who witnessed the shooting were ages four and six. Thankfully, they were not hurt. CPS is arranging care for them. Michael's bond is set at $750,000. A man is facing charges after attempting to rob a Little Caesars and one of their employees' vehicles yesterday over on the north side. 29-year-old Eric Mora now facing an attempted robbery and burglary charge. The incident happened at the store located on Fredericksburg Road. San Antonio police say Mora handed a note to the employee which stated he had a gun and a bomb. That employee was about to activate an alarm. Police say Mora then ran off. However, they were able to find him after witnesses spotted him. A woman also arrested, alleged to being his accomplice. While many celebrate today alongside their fathers, one family mourning the loss of theirs. A vigil tonight honoring the memory of a man who died in a hit and run crash on the city's west side last month. The night team's Jonathan Cotto spoke with family just days after the suspect was arrested. Today, we, his kids should be, his kids should be celebrating Father's Day with him. And instead we have to do a balloon release because somebody decided Somebody decided not to be responsible be behind a wheel. That somebody, 35-year-old Racine Delgado, whose San Antonio police say was behind the wheel of the black Acura MDX that allegedly hit 53-year-old Jerry Alfaro back on May 3rd. The crash happened on General McMullen near Highway 90. Alfaro was pronounced dead at the scene, and Silvia Ruiz, his sister, says she had no reason to believe he wouldn't come home that day. He wasn't out here committing a crime or doing anything that he wasn't supposed to. He was out taking a ride. 
That's all. Now, more than a month later, Delgado was booked on Thursday with a bond set at $150,000. But as of today, she's out on bond. I know she, you know, she hasn't been brought to trial yet or whatever, but if this is how it's starting, I mean, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I mean, anybody out there, put yourself in our shoes. We're not asking for anything that more than, than what my brother deserves. The family devastated by the loss of Alfaro, remembering him as a man who would take the shirt off his back for anyone. They now demand just one thing. We want justice, you know, and, and I'm not asking a life for a life. You know, I'm just asking for justice. That's, that's all we, that's any all of us here want. His sisters, his brothers, his sons, you know, that's all we want. We want justice. That was Jonathan Cotto reporting. Developing overnight, a man is in custody after San Antonio police say he rear-ended a police lieutenant's vehicle last night. That crash happening around 11 p.m. on Loop 410 near Broadway. Police say the lieutenant was driving on 281, heading towards the Loop 410 ramp when the man hit him in their pickup truck. That man was taken into custody for a possible DWI. The lieutenant involved in that crash was not hurt. We have an update for you now on a story we first told you about last night on the night beat. The Hondo Police Department has now found K-9 officer Hugo safe. He was reported missing yesterday evening after escaping his enclosure. In a statement posted on Facebook, the department said in part, quote, we appreciate the outpouring concern and help from the community and social media platform, end quote. Hugo is back with his handler. Taking a look at stories around Texas tonight. Houston residents are now reacting to the news that an off-duty deputy constable's wife and daughter were shot during a home invasion there this morning. Houston police say the woman suffered a gunshot wound to the leg. The girl was hit in the arm. At last check, she underwent surgery but is in stable condition. Houston police say the suspect forced his way into the apartment and fired several rounds. I assumed so. I mean, they're very loud, so. How loud were they? Uh, hurt my ears and my dogs. She ran immediately, too. Super scary and sad. I mean, I just hope everyone's okay. And we heard the helicopter outside, too, um, outside when I got back inside. As of right now, the suspect has not been found in this case. Looking now at the Texas-Mexico border, Nebraska Governor Pete Ricketts announced yesterday he'll be sending state troopers to help patrol the border later this month. Ricketts said the troopers will be in Texas for up to 16 days and will provide assistance to the Texas Department of Public Safety. This comes less than a week after Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis made a similar announcement, saying he'd send to Texas and Arizona to help state law enforcement handle the increase in incoming immigrants. A rolling wave of violence bringing death and fear to the streets of a town just across the Texas-Mexico border. Tonight, 14 people are dead and four suspected shooters have been killed by police in Reynosa just across the border from McAllen. Mexican federal and state forces say the gunmen attacked across the city, shooting taxi drivers, workers, and even a nursing student. People investigators tonight are calling innocent victims. Security forces counterattacked after those shootings, killing the four suspects. Police then patrolled the streets of Reynosa in force, and helicopters flew over the city, leaving many in fear. Drug cartel violence has flashed through Reynosa in the past, but investigators say they're not sure right now if these killings have any connection to drug or gang activity there. SeaWorld making sure Gold Star families are able to enjoy Father's Day while still honoring the fathers they've lost. SeaWorld hosted a family day with nonprofit organization Tuesday's Children. Gold Star families were invited to spend a full day of fun there. The goal of the event is to show the support for military families who have sacrificed the most. This day is very special. Um, like I said earlier, we reconnect with our families that we all share the same loss. The people that do the programs, the events, they're amazing. You know, they really make you feel loved and cared and accepted. Tuesday's children host many events throughout the year for military families who have lost loved ones in the line of duty. Fiesta continuing this weekend, and after more than a year, some people today got to enjoy the classic Fiesta event, A Day in Old Mexico in Chereda. Take a look.
It all happened today at Rancho del Charo. It was a decent turnout with the crowd enjoying displays of traditional Mexican horsemanship. From performances to bull riding, today's events were put on by the Charo Association of San Antonio, which is aimed at preserving the century's old traditions. And as you know, the fun doesn't stop there. There will be a full week of events, starting with the Texas Cavaliers River Parade tomorrow from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And the big event most people are waiting for is the start of NIOSA, Night Out in Old San Antonio, along with the Carnival Open every night at the Alamo Dome. For a complete list of events or more details, head to ksat.com. Outside with live cam, it's been a hot weekend. I don't have to tell you that. And we've got a very hot day ahead tomorrow. I think we'll see some of the highest heat index readings or feels like temperatures that we have seen in a long, long time coming up tomorrow afternoon. So something to consider if you'll be out and about celebrating Fiesta tomorrow. 83 now at the airport. It is muggy out there. Thankfully, we've had a nice breeze this evening. Winds are about 10 to 15 miles per hour. So that breeze always helps to keep that heavy, humid air moving around just a bit more. Uh, coming up, I mentioned hot, hot, hot on Monday tomorrow afternoon, but that also comes with a late day chance of some showers and storms. What does that mean for the river parade forecast? I'll have all that for you coming up in just a bit. We are learning more about injuries and damages following Claudette, which made landfall early Saturday. See the aftermath residents are left with. Plus, you've seen people display their pronouns on Zoom names or email signatures, but what does it all mean? We speak with a non-binary staff member at the Pride Center who explains how it's creating an inclusive society. And a day of celebration turns tragic after a truck runs into a Pride March in Florida. Why officials believe it was all an accident. Next. This day in Fiesta history is powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. So is it Niosa or Neosa? It doesn't matter. We don't care. Just come and have fun. Whatever you call it, a night in old San Antonio is an important part of Fiesta history. Created by the San Antonio Conservation Society, it's become the largest historic preservation festival in the nation. Well, we started in uh, way back in 1936 when we were a fall Indian harvest festival at San Jose Mission. Styled after early Fiesta celebrations, this fall festival eventually moved to La Villita, but it didn't become a Fiesta event until the city asked in 1946. Then, after many years and many names, it happened. In 1948, we became officially known as the Night in Old San Antonio. About 85,000 visitors attend, and they eat a lot. I mean, we're talking 17,000 pounds of beef and 11,000 pounds of chicken. On average, we've contributed about $1.6 million annually, and that goes towards the, the Society's mission of historic preservation. Preserving our history with a few beers and chicken on a stick? Now that's what I call a party. Adam Kasky, KSAT 12 News. One person killed, another injured Saturday when a man accidentally drove his truck into a crowd at the start of a pride march in South Florida. The driver was taken into custody and is now being questioned by investigators. Here's ABC's Alex Prache with the details. A South Florida gay pride march turned tragic Saturday when a man drove his truck into the crowd. Two pedestrians are down, evidently a vehicle possibly ran over them. There could be additional patients. The incident unfolded at the Stonewall Pride Parade and Festival at Wilton Manors, Florida, just north of Fort Lauderdale. Two people were injured as a result of this incident. I advise Brown we're going to have an adult trauma alert and a trauma code. Both victims were transported to the Broward Health Medical Center, where one was pronounced dead. The other man is expected to survive. Fort Lauderdale's mayor was a few feet away. And then all of a sudden, this white pickup truck dashed right through the crowd, smashed through a gate, smashed into a landscaping company, and, and, and he hit two people on the ground. The mayor adding the truck narrowly missed the car Florida Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz was riding in. On Twitter, she thanked first responders and added, we're praying for the victims and their loved ones as law enforcement investigates. Witnesses say the driver's truck appeared to be part of the parade as it lined up with other vehicles and floats. 
The driver was taken into custody at the scene and brought in for questioning. The Wilton Manors Police Department put out a statement calling Saturday's incident a tragic accident and not a criminal act directed at anyone or any group of individuals. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, it was a warm day to celebrate mm. Dad. Hope you found something cool to do with the old guy. Yeah. We know that you had some pool time. I did. That's good to know. <laughs> and happy Father's Day to you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. I want to see my dog swimming. Go check out my, what is it, Facebook page? He got all, he got all creative on, on social media. Really cool. I'm home alone. There's nothing else to do. <laughs> The pool was a good place to be today, that's for sure. You picked a good spot, Tim. Uh, and we're going to see really high heat indices tomorrow. But at least tomorrow we can say, hey, it's summer. Because today, technically, it wasn't summer. Yes, technicality. Summer actually begins in just a few minutes at 1031. That's when the summer solstice occurs. But, I mean, come on. We've been sweat. Yeah, we'll go outside and, and ho ho. Woohoo! Probably no fireworks uh, for this one. Um, I've had a couple of questions about, does this change our sunset, sunrise times a whole lot? And and I think some folks may be thinking of the time change, fall back, spring forward. Our sunset time doesn't change much. It's actually going to get later by about a minute through early July, and then it will gradually start to get a little bit earlier. But our length of daylight actually will start to change a little bit here after the solstice. So yesterday, our length of daylight, 14 hours, one minute, 51 seconds today, 53 seconds. But by this time next Sunday, it's going to be down to 14 hours, one minute and two seconds. So we'll actually start to shave off a few seconds of daylight each day now after the summer solstice and we don't start gaining length of day until the winter solstice, but it's not until December. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Uh, high temperatures today, 92 in San Antonio. Our average this time of year is 93. We did have a few spots touch the uh, century mark from Catula up to Carrizo Springs and 105. Out in Del Rio this afternoon, still plenty warm out there now. 83 at the airport here in town, 89 in Catula, still 93 in Del Rio. Dew points are up. They fell off a little bit this afternoon, but not by much. For a lot of us, they stayed in the 70s all day. That's oppressive humidity, and that's where these numbers are going to stay essentially through tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening. We're going to keep our dew points in the 70s pretty much all day tomorrow, and it's because of that that we are going to see such high heat index readings tomorrow afternoon. So with that, with that air staying really humid, um, that's what's going to keep these heat index readings so high. So here's tomorrow afternoon, Monday. For most of us, we're looking at the heat index 105 plus, but there will be some areas likely west of 35 and south of 90 that could see their heat index jump above 110, maybe approaching 115 for a period of time tomorrow afternoon. So I know we're Texans and we're tough. We're used to the heat, but this can be dangerous heat if you're outside for an extended period of time and you're not staying properly hydrated. So please keep that in mind tomorrow. Otherwise, for your Monday, a very muggy gray start to the day, breaking through to some sun in the afternoon, but that's where we'll see that dangerous heat come into play. And then later in the day, a chance of rain enters the forecast. So let's talk about what we've got going on here. Pretty quiet across Texas. There's a nice batch of rain out in the Gulf of Mexico. Some of that can move inland closer to the Houston area. Not expecting that to affect our forecast. Some severe weather today from portions of Iowa. Um, into uh, Illinois now and parts of the Great Lakes. That's because there's a cold front there. This front is actually going to drop down into Texas during the day tomorrow, and this is what brings us our chance of rain as we get into later in the day on Monday. So again, through tomorrow afternoon, mainly just dealing with the heat. I can't roll out a stray little shower here or there, but we're not going to start to increase our rain chances until after sunset tomorrow evening. 8 p.m. river parades going on, I think will be just fine, but as we approach 9, 10 o'clock, we'll be watching for some storms to wander through the hill country, making their way closer to the Highway 90 corridor. So here's 11 p.m. I do expect here in San Antonio, rain will begin here likely after 10 p.m. closer to midnight and then we'll have some isolated showers and storms continue to rumble through overnight through early on Tuesday. So keep in mind tomorrow's rain chance is going to be one that kicks in later in the day. If your plans do take you out to the river parade again, I think it's going to be just fine as we approach the end of the parade. That's when we'll start to look off to the north for some of those storms approaching from parts of the hill country. We'll be here to keep you updated, of course, and you know Adam's going to be paying attention because he's going to be out there with the the canyon. Oh, yeah. The <laughs> Caskey Roan. So you get to see Myra Arthur's fiesta hair, too. Yes. That's always fun. <laughs> yes.
oh. all of our KSAT Fiesta traditions. Yes, I will watch from home in the AC tomorrow <laughs> night. All right, we'll have a uh, preview of Instant Replay coming up right after this. All right, we now know the final four teams that will be competing for the 2021 NBA championship. With more on that and what's on instant replay tonight, let's check in with our Greg Simmons. It's not the final four I was expecting. No, How about no, you? And, no. of course, tonight's game, that was a shocker, was too. A and who takes the U.S. Open title coming up tonight on a brand-new edition of Instant Replay? Collins saves it. No, right into the hands of Thibel. Harris gives it right back. Thibel throws it down. We did not know the final team to compete for the NBA championship. Tonight's game seven between the Hawks and the Sixers. Now we know will be the final four. And the Suns and Clippers tip off the Western Conference Finals with two-star sideline for game one. The U.S. Open with some drama down the stretch with a first-time major winner on first-time Father's Day for him. He can fight. He got he got skills. Looking at this kid right now, he willing to sit this side and give it up like that. <laughs> Looking at his face, he earned that belt. <laughs> I give you that, youngin. He got it. Barrios, he come to fight. He come to fight. San Antonio world champion Mario Barrios defends his title this weekend as a main event on a worldwide Showtime broadcast. We'll get you ready for the second and final edition of All Access in Barrios' camp. All that plus, who will win the 2021 NBA championship? Tonight you decide. Instant Replay is live and is after the night beat. Looks like it'll be a good run to the finals. Oh, yeah. Good one. All right. Thank you, Greg. Night beat continues right after this. Residents along the Gulf Coast are starting to clean up after Tropical Storm Claudette pounded the area with heavy rains and powerful winds this weekend. The storm has been downgraded to a tropical depression as it moves across the southeast, but it is expected to strengthen as it reaches the Carolinas. ABC's Trevor Alt has the details. Claudette is still packing heavy rain and gusty winds as it travels across the southeast. In Atlanta, firefighters rescuing a woman from this car early Sunday after it was crushed by a massive tree and power lines. The woman transported to the hospital with injuries. The storm made landfall along the northern Gulf Coast early Saturday. Some areas seeing up to two inches of rain per hour. Residents in Slidell, Louisiana, now assessing the damage. I can't believe this. Neighborhoods in Mississippi Mississippi completely flooded. This will give you a better viewpoint of all the flooding around us right now. Terrence Ladner with water up to his neck carried his family members out of the house where they waited in his truck bed for help to arrive. You lost everything inside. Oh, yeah. Pretty much bed, clothes, you name it. But you're just grateful to be alive. I'm grateful to be alive. The flooding made rescues difficult. And we had close to between eight and ten inches of rain. We had trouble uh, in a couple areas uh, launching boats because the water was real swift. In Alabama, a tornado ripped through Escambia County. At least 50 homes damaged or destroyed, trees toppled, this trailer park leveled. The heavy rains causing this landslide in Tuscaloosa. And on a highway south of Montgomery, 10 people, including nine children, were killed Saturday in a crash involving at least 18 vehicles with wet roads likely to blame. Police say the only survivor of the van crash, the driver, was rescued by a bystander. Claudette was downgraded to a tropical depression Saturday afternoon as it moved inland, but it's forecast to strengthen as it reaches the Carolinas. Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. And now over to Chicago, where police say rampant, unrelated gun violence has left 49 people injured and five dead just since Friday. One of those shootings left a 24-year-old man dead and a 25-year-old woman in critical condition. The two were going on a walk when police say they were attacked by two or three people who pulled handguns and began shooting at them. The man was shot in the head and was taken to a nearby hospital where he died. The woman was shot in the neck and remains in critical condition. More now on that Atlanta woman who is in the hospital tonight after a large oak tree and power line fell on her this morning. Just saw that in that ABC package. A witness said the woman was driving up the street when the tree collapsed on top of her car. Atlanta Fire and Rescue said the oak limbs just barely missed her head and that woman was then trapped in the car. Firefighters, though, were able to get her out and she was taken to the hospital with just minor injuries. 
The Department of Homeland Security is extending COVID-19 non-essential travel restrictions at border crossings with both Canada and Mexico until July 21st. They made the announcement today, just two days after Canada made the same restrictions for the U.S. In March 2020, the U.S. and Canada mutually agreed to close the border to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. It's not clear if the travel restrictions with Mexico and Canada by land or ferry crossings will extend beyond July 21st. In consumer news tonight, it is going to be a week full of big deals, starting with Amazon Prime Day tomorrow. Other major retailers also promising big savings with some deals even happening right now. ABC's Deirdre Bolton is here to help you save some money. Amazon Prime Day is here. This morning, Amazon, Walmart, Target, Best Buy, and others are fighting for your attention. Launching some of the biggest deals of the season, and consumers can be the winners. Amazon, gearing up to put more than 2 million items on sale. Prime Day starts tomorrow and will feature discounts on items such as Amazon devices, robot vacuums, headphones, and kitchen appliances, with consumers getting between 20 and 50% off. All other retailers, or most other retailers, jump on the bandwagon because they want to offer deals and bargains for the consumer. Walmart has a Deals for Days event running from today till June 23rd. One smart TV is already listed at $178 versus $228. A Chromebook now listed at 159, originally 179. Prepare to be amazed. And Target getting in on the action with its own deal days, also starting today and ending on the 22nd. The home has been a real priority area in terms of spending home improvement, home furnishings. We're still nesting, even though we're hopefully coming out of the pandemic. Best Buy's Bigger Deal Savings event is already underway. Promotions include up to 50% off small kitchen appliances, in addition to $250 off select gaming laptops and up to $400 off select Samsung Galaxy phones. Some general advice from the experts? Look very carefully at what those deals are. Always compare prices and always look for things that you want to buy anyway. Don't get caught up in sale fever. Only buy what you really want and need. Otherwise, it's not really a bargain. Deirdre Bolton, ABC News, New York. I'm sorry, it just stresses me out. It's too much. Save money. Don't buy anything. <laughs> Pretty I, simple. It's not possible. I don't work that way. Well, some people might start Christmas shopping this early. Get those deals. It's giving me major Black Friday vibes. Right? <laughs> this, like last. I think that's. It's, yeah, yeah, it stresses me out. I'm like, oh, do I? <laughs> what do I need that? And is that the best price? And then uh, yeah. So that's happening. Uh, what also happened this weekend, uh, our third name tropical system, Claudette, still a tropical depression. Center is over land right now, but this has continued to produce a lot of rain and moisture over parts of the Carolinas today. Hurricane Center actually thinks it will re-strengthen back into tropical storm status tonight, early tomorrow, and then it will continue to move northeast through the Atlantic through Tuesday of this week. So that's almost a wrap on Claudette. We've got a chance of rain here coming up late in the day tomorrow. We'll talk more about that and take another look at your forecast for the week ahead coming up. Courtney. Thank you, Katie. Still to come, yet another sequel opened in theaters this weekend as moviegoers ventured out looking for familiar faces on the big screen. We'll tell you the top five at the box office. But coming up next, creating a more inclusive society. That is the goal behind announcing your pronouns. We speak with a local non-binary person who explains why this is so important. <laughs> Pronouns, they describe a person, place, or thing, but nowadays it means so much more to those who are non-binary and gender fluid. Our producer Alexis Page with how the trend of announcing one's pronouns is all about creating a more inclusive society. I am a queer, trans, non-binary femme. It might seem like a long way to introduce yourself, but for Erika Alcocer, a community empowerment coordinator at Pride Center San Antonio, each label holds a specific meaning. Queer is a really comfortable word for me. Um, and my generation, I believe we really believe ourselves as queer in so many aspects of sex, gender, and sexuality. And non-binary really just to me rejects 
the gender binary. But what is a non-binary person? Robert Salcido Jr., executive director at Pride Center San Antonio, says it's people who don't prescribe to societal gender norms. They see themselves as just an individual. They see themselves as who they are, um, again, but may not prescribe as male or female. So how does this relate to pronouns? When we talk about pronouns and when we think about pronouns, people often associate it with the LGBTQ plus community. However, pronoun usage is something that should be normalized for all uh, individuals, regardless of their sexual orientation or their gender identity. Pronouns don't have to necessarily indicate gender. Alcocer right? so, uses the pronouns I, they, I, them, I because as mentioned pronoun, before, pronoun. they don't identify as man or woman. And using they to describe a person is not something uncommon. One researcher at Penn State said, really, 90 percent of the time when we don't know someone's gender, we already are using they quite a bit. So we've been doing this really for centuries. Bridget Drinka, a professor of linguistics at UTSA, says majority of the English language is ungendered. And the trend of using they as a way to replace he, she, or it has been going on since 2009, according to the Oxford English Dictionary. On Twitter was the first usage of somebody using a they precisely to refer to uh, someone who didn't really want to identify their gender. For Alcocer, it's the um, best way to express themselves. Because it's who I really am and it's who I would have been if I was a child and given that space to understand. And, and I grew up in a very um, non-oppressive and non-homophobic or transphobic space allowed to dress up and to really play with gender, which is beautiful. It's something everyone can participate in regardless of gender status. In our email signatures or, you know, our social media handles, um, and uh, even in our Zoom uh, display names. Ultimately, creating a more inclusive society for those who identify as non-binary or gender fluid. I believe that our society doesn't allow youth and children to understand gender as a spectrum, which it is, just like our emotions. To me, I feel seen when someone uses they, them, or AJ pronouns. I feel loved, I feel appreciated, and recognize Alexis Page, KSAT 12 News. So it's officially summer. Oh, oh it yeah. is. We forgot to go outside and chant. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we were a little busy <laughs> I doing I missed, our jobs. I, I missed it myself. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to summer. Yay. Yay. Let's Still. get it out of here and start fall. I did. It's, <laughs> oh, it's it the time for moving. spice. It's not my favorite. Pop. Pumpkin spice. Pumpkin spice. Pop spice. Pop. I gotta tell ya, I uh, <laughs> bought some, there were pumpkin spice frozen waffles at the store this morning. See, I, I knew it's gotta be out there already somewhere. It's a mindset. Yeah, it's a mindset. <laughs> it's a mindset. <laughs> Look An at identity. This. Speaking of pumpkin spice, it still feels like 91 outside. Blech. 83 is our air temperature. Dew point in the upper 70s, mid to upper 70s is, what's, is what makes it feel like 91, but at least we've got a decent breeze in place. Check this out. I don't enjoy sharing this with you. Del Rio, it's 93, but it still feels like 101. Yep, 1047, so that's not fun. But decent breeze out in Del Rio as well. That helps a little bit. Again, the breeze just keeps this heavy air moving around just a bit more. Uh, looking ahead to rain chances because this time of year we turn to chances of rain for hope of some sort of cool down during the day tomorrow. Low chance of a stray shower, but it's tomorrow night late, late tomorrow evening into tomorrow night that we've got our best chance at some showers and storms and then a couple lingering showers into Tuesday. Otherwise, the week ahead will be quiet as far as rainfall is concerned. So there's that rain out in the Gulf of Mexico that's not going to be moving our direction, but it's been a pretty active, severe weather weather day well to the north and east of Texas today. A reported tornado across portions of Iowa. We've got severe thunderstorm watch boxes. That the, that's these yellow boxes here um, across portions of Illinois and off closer to the Great Lakes. There's a low pressure system near the Great Lakes and its associated cold front and this front will be dropping down into Texas tomorrow. So through tomorrow morning, it's still going to be way up north of the Red River and we'll wake up to overcast skies. Temperatures just shy of 80 degrees and that humidity is still going to be sky high. So it is going to be 
a really just soupy morning for us tomorrow. So be ready for that when you step out the door in the morning. Lunchtime on your Monday, starting to see some clearing, especially off to the west of San Antonio. Here in town, we could hang on to mostly cloudy skies through lunchtime, 88 degrees. And I mentioned a chance of a stray shower, especially as we get into the afternoon tomorrow, but it's going to be late, late Monday evening into Monday night that we'll have our best chance of rain as this front finally approaches our area tomorrow night. So 11 p.m. we're starting to see a broken line of some thunderstorms moving in from the north. And again, for here in San Antonio, Bear County, I do think it'll be 10 p.m. and after that we start to see these storms approach our area. Look be a little bit earlier up in the hill country, but if you've got plans to go to the river parade tomorrow, starting at 7, 7 until 9, I do think we'll get through the river parade without any issues. It'll be after that that these thunder showers rumble on through as we get past midnight. Couple of lingering thunder showers will be possible and then even some isolated spotty showers through early on Tuesday. As far as the severe weather risk goes, it is on the low side for Texas a one on a one to five scale and it really starts to drop off just you know right here in San Antonio and Bear County. So what this one on a one to five scale means is that we could have a handful of some storms on the stronger side, maybe with some hail up to the size of quarters and some 60 mile per hour wind gusts. I think that will be the exception rather than the rule simply because by the time these storms get to us tomorrow night, we will have lost a lot of the daytime heating uh, and that will put them on the weaker side as they approach our area. Nonetheless, we'll be here to keep you updated until then tomorrow. Very soupy in the morning. The humidity hangs around all day. That's what puts our heat indices tomorrow afternoon 105 plus. So be careful out there in that heat. Now Tuesday behind that front, not cold, but we will see our highs <laughs> drop down to near 90. Quick turnaround though, upper 90s by the end of the week. So a brief break short lift yeah. heat index 105. Okay, <laughs> that's so Courtney, fun. your order to stay inside. That's really fun when you're pregnant. If you were wondering, <laughs> I'll be staying inside. <laughs> we'll be back. That's the past. I'm Cruella. Cruella stayed in fifth place, earning $5.1 million for a domestic total of $65 million. The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It took fourth, conjuring up $5.2 million. Peter Rabbit 2, The Runaway, bounced down to third with $6.1 million. A Quiet Place Part 2 returned to second place. $9.4 million gave the sequel a domestic total of $125 million. Hang on. What is he doing here? I believe it's pronounced. Thank you. The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard was the top sequel and the top movie, taking first place with $11.7 million on the weekend and $17 million since its Wednesday debut. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Okay, of all the sports stars that have played in San Antonio or are from the Alamo City, who do you think would make a Mount Rushmore of the city's all-time athletes? Ooh, that's a good one. And mm -hmm. the Texas Longhorns begin playing the College World Series in Omaha. With more on what's an instant replay tonight, let's head over to Greg Simmons. Yeah, good to see him back in Omaha. And how did the San Antonio's own Paddle Award finish in today's Rev Group Grand Prix of Road America? Coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. This is for you guys. You guys have been there with us the whole time. You deserve this championship, San Antonio. You deserve it. There are many outstanding athletes who have suited up in San Antonio or are from the Alamo City over the years, but who would make the Mount Rushmore, so to speak, of those star athletes? Tonight and over the next month, we'll be introducing you to some of the more famous standouts. That ball is belted to right field. Allen going back, looking up, and it's gone. It's a one-run game. The Texas Longhorns are back in the College World Series, taking on Mississippi State in the first round of all the highlights of Game 1. And how does San Antonio's own Pato Award finish in the Rev Group Grand Prix Road America? All that plus the latest on Spurs assistant Becky Hammond and her quest to become a head coach of the NBA. Instant Replay is live, and it's next. Lots to talk about tonight, as always. See you in a minute. Greg, see you then. We'll be right back.